Hello everybody, my name is kepguy 378 and welcome back to the Prussian Quest. We ended up last time thinking that Alex was cheating on me or found someone better and that all my thoughts kept... just... kept... coming back in a negative loop. And... but she called me in the morning and... I... I trained everything out and I feel better now. It's a cold Saturday afternoon. You've just arrived at Alex's apartment and you're happy to finally see her after a week of absence due to your schedule is not lining up due to work and school. You hug her in the doorway but she breaks away sooner than normal and sits down on the couch as you take off your sneakers and lay them in the usual place right next to hers. There's something I was hoping we could talk about actually. She says, instantly worried that you're being blindsided by a breakup conversation due to the sudden shift in tone. But she quickly smiles and puts you at ease once she sees all the color leave your face. It's nothing bad, I promise. With that, she leads you over to the couch and sits on the other end of it, facing you. So, I hope this doesn't freak you out, and if you feel like things are going too fast, just tell me. She talks faster than usual and fidgets. We seem to have a lot of weeks like this and they really suck. I was thinking I'd ask, since things are so strong with us, what are your thoughts of on moving, maybe, uh, together? It takes a few seconds to sink in, and leaves you a bit shocked when it does. You were worried she wanted to spend less time with you, not more. Do you want to? You ask. Well, yeah, I do. I mean... We'd have to sort out logistics and everything, but those are all things we can take care of. You start to walk through the steps of imagining the two of you living together. You love the thought of being able to wake up next to her every day and seeing her so often. However, the more you picture it, the more a few concerns become apparent. There are things she is insulated from, like the days you don't feel like you can even get out of bed, the nights your medication keeps you from being able to sleep. All those moments you're, you're stuck staring at the wall, completely out of energy and feeling nothing. How would she handle that? How quickly would she want to get away? So, she starts, what do you think? Take your relationship's next step with ease, move in together. Tell her you want to but have concerns and discuss them honestly. Tell her you don't think it's a good idea for you right now. Decide to move in regardless of your worries. Um, see, I'm doing well, I'm doing well, and I am doing well with everything. Perfect. Um, yeah, these side effects do suck. Um, some, some are more apparent in medication, some are stronger, uh, stronger with the side effects, some are, some have less side effects, some, some depends on how much you take, how much strength. Uh, of the medication you're taking, it all depends on a lot of factors. In and but these these do, I've I've had these before. Um, being able to sleep is is the worst. Um, I need sleep to function, but without sleep, I just I I just I get worse. Uh, when I had uh, depression before, I just get worse and just kind of isolate myself from everything. And, and then sometimes I just don't even want to get out of bed also because you're the lethargic. You, you wasted so much energy thinking about all the negative things in the world, all the bad things, all the horrible things that could happen, that, sh that, what, um, that could happen, that uh, did happen in the past already or, or, um, or keep thinking the future, far, far, far into the future of what things are going to look like going forward with whatever you're thinking and it, it's 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 horrible but being with someone that you love gives you energy gives you gives you the strength that you need but but talking it out first is is always the best idea you are really worried that if Alex were to live with you she wouldn't be able to deal with your days of being unable to get out of bed or nights where you can do nothing but stare at the wall and panic. Even though you've discussed your situation with her, you still fear that she doesn't realize the depths of how bad it gets. It's one thing for you to detail how you feel sometimes, and for her to see it pop up occasionally. 
It's an entirely different situation for it to be something she has to live with alongside you. Well, I'd like to, but I think it's best if we talk about it a bit more before committing to a decision. Though she seems a little defeated, you make it clear that you're not making excuses and actually mean that you want to talk. You reiterate that. You reiterate that. I love that English. You reiterate a lot of what you've told Alex that night, and although she gets a little defensive and tells you that she knows all of that already, she confirms that she is willing to help you sort through your issues. I feel like you forget I love you sometimes. I know that there will be bad days, and I'd rather try to work through them with you. We can figure all of this out together. Her words sway you, and you can't help but hold her close to you. You're doing well. Is that bad days? Okay. Doing well with my therapist and my medications are awesome. Good. It's December and you return to your parents' house to celebrate the holidays with your family. Out the living room window, you can see a gentle flurry of snow drifting down to meet the pristine blanket of white from yesterday's unexpected Christmas Eve snowfall. And you quietly laugh to yourself at how incredibly cliche it seems. Still, as you sit down to dinner, you can't help but notice how being surrounded by family and the overly kitschy atmosphere your mom's decorations have created have actually made you feel relaxed and almost comfortable. Your mom is running around frantically, checking the oven and the stockings, and just gener generally trying to fam trying to family time it up. While your dad sits at the head of the table, drinking a beer and laughing with your brother Malcolm, his wife Karen is there too, whom. You've always gotten along with, well with, and your parents even agreed to let you bring your kin along. She's been darting in and out of people's legs and hopping into laps all night. As you thoughtfully munch away at your turkey, listening to the conversations around you, your thoughts drift back over the last few months. Think about how hard things had gotten, replaying over in your head some of your worst as well as some of your best memories. It seems like all of these things just came to a head over. In the past few months, with the sudden flurry of relationship turmoil and professional anxiety, social stress, and above all, an omnipresent sense of a weight that seems you ju have just recently become aware of, you're drawn out of your reverie by your dad's familiar booming laugh as as some cheesy comment Malcolm made seems to have hit its mark. Sitting at that table. You're suddenly immensely glad for the chance to be able to ignore everything for an evening and not have to struggle trying to explain yourself for once. Fortunately, everyone seems to be content with laughing at each other's jokes and discussing favorite sports teams. And for a while, you think you'll be able to get through dinner without any embarrassing personal intrusions. But no, sooner did the thought cross your mind than the table conversation trickles off, leaving a slightly awkward silence to descend upon the dinner. So. How are you doing these days? Your mom asks you pointedly. It's such a simple question and one that you seem to have had to answer countless times recently. You take a moment to collect your thoughts, then looking up, you take a deep breath. You've never really thought of yourself as a fighter, and even to say it now, it sounds hokey. But looking back on the past few months to where you are now, it. It really does feel like you've endured an immense struggle, and you look at where you are now with a sense of something that isn't quite pride. You still hate your job and and find it unpleasant, but you're surprised to find that going into work every day is no longer a monumental challenge. You started adopting some clever techniques, like taking short two-minute breaks every hour to break up the monotony. You now view your job as just eight short hours of your day, a com a compart. Mentalization technique Dr. Melvo told you about that you found actually works quite well. You know the job isn't what you want to do for the rest of your life, and you've started actively looking for other positions, even attending a couple of preliminary interviews. You started making efforts to go out with your friends more, while the social scene still makes you very uncomfortable sometimes. You're more and more able to let yourself just enjoy the company of your friends. In fact, your relationship with many of them has increased over the past like a little while. You still definitely have days where you flake out or don't feel up to hanging out, but for the most part, your friends are understanding and appreciate your communication. I feel like that a little bit at times. Sometimes, sometimes I just, sometimes I just like to enjoy the company of 
of my friends, of all the people that I hang out, and kind of just listen in on, you know, how their life is going and how, you know, everything is good. And then I just put in my two cents here or there sometimes. By far the biggest change you've noticed in your life has been in your relationship with Alex. You're terrified of talking to her about everything at first, but looking back you feel like it's only strengthened your relationship. He was always, she was always supportive of you emotionally, but lately the two of you have been even more in sync. It's really strange to feel like you're building a life together. It even seems like the two of you have been making a more concerted effort to sync up your schedules. And have been spending more and more of your downtime with each other. Pretty soon, you think moving in together may be a very real possibility. Dr. Melville has commented on how well you seem to be doing, and whether it resolved the therapy, the medication, or both, you can't help but agree. With all that seems to have improved recently, it's sometimes difficult for you to think about the fact that you still have bad days, sometimes even really bad days. You serve as a stark reminder of the fact that this will be something you likely have to deal with for the rest of your life. Depression is a battle, and though you're certainly ahead in the fight, you know the battle isn't ever going to be over. Sometimes even Alex can tell when things are going rough, despite your best efforts to the contrary. While you know that your depression can never be cured, you have a very strong support network in your friends and even Malcolm, and armed with a newfound confidence in your friends and family, you accept that though the road may be rocky, it is at very least not solitary. You meet your mom's gaze from across the table and muster up a smile. I'm good, mom, you tell her. She says nothing, but you can feel her smile from across the room. Epilogue. We, realize, we really want to thank you for taking the time to play Depression Quest. We realize it may not be the most enjoyable game you've ever played, or even the easiest, and we sincerely appreciate your involvement. Like Depression itself, Depression Quest does not have an end, really. There is no neat resolution to depression, and it was important to us that Depression Quest's own resolution reflect that. Instead of a tidying, instead of a tidy ending, we want to just provide a series of outlooks to take moving forward. After all, that's all we can really do with depression, to keep moving forward. And at the end of the day, it's more out, it's our outlook and support from people just like you that makes all the difference in the world. Thanks again. And then these are the people that made it. Zoe Quinn, Patrick Lindsay. And then that. Everyone, I really want to thank you all for watching this video, watching the whole series of this gameplay. I know it wasn't easy to listen to someone who who gives experiences of his life, you know, of his depression and how he dealt with, uh, why am I talking third person, how I dealt with it. and. How, how I'm doing, uh, how I'm, ah, uh, oh, English, terrible today for some reason. Okay. And it's just hard um, sometimes to listen to someone that, you know, has depression sometimes. Uh, talking about depression within a depression quest game because, you know, it, it's, it's kind of sad and depressing. A lot of depressed words there, but I just want um, you guys to know that it isn't easy for depression. If you do have depression, I I hope you can get the help you need. I really hope that you, you, you seek the help that is out there available to you. Seek a therapist, seek a psychiatrist for medication, seek a uh, talk to someone that that you trust talk to your family if you trust them a lot about this um stuff um that they understand hope that they are understanding to talk to um to talk to about you don't want to talk to someone that isn't really understanding or understand these things or has a negative outlook on on these type of things that's when it, it hurts that's when it hits you inside and you feel like you are crap you feel like crap
like you just feel you feel down and you think about why am I like this? Why am I like this? Why do I have to be put up like this? Why do I why do I have depression? Why why do I have to be so down all the time? Why is this happening to me? You get all those thoughts and then you just you just don't know what to do. You you just feel crappier and crappier. But when you have someone that's understanding, like a friend that you know for a while, or or family member that that understands you or knows you a lot, then it is best to just let them know because they would be understanding and support you. Be supportive of what you're going to do. Depression is a really hard thing to fight against. It's a battle that you fight with every day. Even if you have a little bit left, even if it's not full blown and just overwhelming you. Like it, it, it you will have thoughts, you will have things to think about a lot of the times. But it's the techniques and strategies that that help you overcome these hardships and experiences. And then you can look back sometimes. You don't want to look back all the time. Because sometimes when you think back a lot of all the things, it will you just feel worse. But think of all good times. Think of think of the little things that made you happy. Think of the little things that could help you along the way. Think of that one thing to motivate you to do your best. I actually read a book that, that helped me and I actually would recommend it. It is called The Happiness Trap by Russ Harris. The Happiness Trap gives you a a huge understanding and it's it's a it's a therapy it's a it's a therapy that helps you be mindful of what is now without having your mind wander everywhere else it's a mindfulness based therapy it is, I think it's really good because it has helped me through a lot of these things in the past. After my hospital visit, after my intensive care within the psychiatric ward of them monitoring, uh, monitoring me and just seeing, you know, how my mental breakdown, you know, really is. Is it going down? Am I feeling better? I had that book with me and I just read it. I read the I read it within the whole time I was there. I was there for a week. I was there for a long time. Week was a long time to me. And just reading the book helped me understand it and it it made me feel a lot better to just be able to drop a lot of my past, a lot of my burdens, a lot of my guilt, a lot of the things that held me down that made me feel horrible every day and and now I am doing something that I love and that's YouTube right now I I love being able to record games I love playing games I love sharing the experiences and understand and helping and and you know connecting with people that like the same games that I do and and, it's, and, and then watching me go through the game with my thoughts going into the game of, of why I'm thinking like this or how I'm thinking like this. And maybe, maybe it's something that this book will help you too. Uh, again, the book is The Happiness Trap by Russ Harris. Thank you all for watching this video and please share this video. Please share this. I really want everyone who watches this to share this video. And because it could help someone that has depression. Thank you everybody again.
and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!